uh, probably about half the beat writers because everybody else is on their way to Indianapolis. So uh, we'll start off with uh, Andrew Kahn from M Live for you. Hey, coach, thanks for doing this. Uh, what is the key, and then feel free to put this in layman's terms, to good offensive spacing? <laughs> uh, making shots, having threats on the floor. Um, you, you, you have to be in position to attack um, a scouting report. And we're not the only staff in America that watches and comes up with scouting reports, and that's what teams are doing. They, they're coming up with scouting reports. Uh, and you know, Andrew, I'm not like this analytic guy, but the numbers are the numbers. It's always been that way. And if you look at our numbers and say, you know, we can, we can space them right now because the ball's not going in the basket. And then the second part of that is that they're mimicking what they're seeing other teams do. So uh, for us, like to have good spacing, now I will add one little caveat there. You have to have pace. You have to have pace. And so that the game is a smooth game and not this, you know, like almost like root canal without Novocaine. Uh, and look, I'm being honest. That's the way it feels right now. It's, it's, there's a grind and we don't want, we want to get into a flow. Spacing will come from better pace and better shot making. And I, I take it you're confident you can get there with this group. You don't feel like, all right, we need to be a grinded out and start winning games in the 50s type of team. Uh, not an enjoyable style, uh, but I will say by any means necessary and uh, absolutely completely uh, confident that the teaching, the, the drill work that we're doing and the um, – the character of the players, not just the skill of the players, but the character of the players. Um, we will get there. Thank you. Next up is uh, Alejandro from Michigan Insider. Hey, Coach. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier this year that Devontae Jones was doing things in games that were maybe uncharacteristic of him in practice. Um, specifically, it was foul trouble at that point. Uh, what sort of things are you seeing in practice that maybe he's not bringing out in games? Uh, what sort of things do you feel he still has to work on? I think it's easier. To, the second part is, is uh, we want him to get lane touches. We want that ball to get into the paint and not just through passing to Hunter or to Musa. Um, we want to make sure that we get lane touches and that, that he can then, to use the terminology, spray the ball uh, around. and. Uh, Right now, we're seeing a little bit more of that each practice, uh, but that's what we're really looking for. That, that, that's the key, uh, not worrying about shots, but, but making sure that the ball gets into the teeth of the defense and that we can uh, create our offenses at, off of penetration and pitching the ball. Uh, and again, the situations that he's in in practice, it's there, but it's practice. You know, when the when the popcorn's popping and the lights are bright uh, and everybody's watching, you know, you want to make sure that 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 there's a carryover from practice. He is spending an exorbitant amount of time with uh, Howard Isley, uh, film breakdown conversations on the floor. Uh, obviously, Jawan is a is a um, a film aficionado. So uh, all hands are on deck here. And uh, again, complete confidence that Devontae will get there sooner rather than later. Next question is Anthony Broom from the Wolverine. Hey, Phil, on the flip side of that, when Frankie Collins has had to come in and spell Devante, it hasn't seemed like so far the moment's been too big for him. Uh, what have you seen from him um, these last couple of games? Uh, I think you're exactly right. Like, it's not too big. 
he does carry himself in a way like even in in the way he walks into a practice the way he goes through practice uh i think that that the the insistence with him is uh last year when 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 people saw him play on those national settings in the high school games i think one of the things that came out uh was that he was relentless on defense we need that and he has been he has been told that that and that not 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 cr criticizing but let's take this up at another level let's not be safe let's get up there and uh let, let's let's put pressure on their ball uh, as much as they're putting pressure on our ball so his growth to me yes he has to become a better shooter that will that will be reps and and a little alteration in his form and we want to make sure that he becomes an elite foul shooter and that he becomes in the in the affectionate terms the pit bull on defense that we have seen um and, and last year at this time, Mike Smith wasn't a pit bull. And then Juwan Howard stayed on him every minute of every day, of every practice, of every game, and it changed. And that's the same that we will expect from, from Frankie. Next up is uh, Mark Ziegler from the San Diego Union Tribune. Hi, Coach. I think last time I talked to you, you were in Vieas Arena for an NCAA uh, press conference, and one of my esteemed colleagues was asking you if St. Joe's was a Catholic institution. Um, I remember that well. <laughs> <laughs> Not one of the finer by, moments. By the, way, by, the way, I, by the way, since the guys from Ann Arbor aren't listening, they're focused on football, San Diego is the nicest city that I've ever visited. Uh, I, will, I will say that. That's why I live there. Uh, Speaking of San Diego, when you look at San Diego State, are they a little bit like you in that, I mean, when San Diego State makes shots, they're a pretty darn good basketball team this year. And when they don't, it's pretty ugly to watch. Uh, you know, obviously a very good defensive team, but it, it, do you kind of look at, at their film and say, oh, that's kind of like us? Uh, to be honest with you, when I looked at their numbers, uh, when, when I first looked at their numbers, because it's my scout, when I first looked at the numbers, I was like, holy mackerel, this is like a mirror, the, the numbers. Uh, uh, and then when I've watched their film, uh, the thing that jumps out is, uh, it, it's beauty in the eye of the beholder, their defensive effort, whoever goes in the game, when the backups go in the game, their defensive effort is just absolutely inspiring, uh, to me. So I, I'm kind of looking at the game and saying, well, are we going to be able to score and run some offense? And kind of get out of this little little uh, rut that we're in on the offensive end. This isn't the ideal opponent. Uh, at the offensive end of the floor, I think that that uh, them featuring Bradley, uh, the the confidence that the the young uh, Pullman, the point guard plays with, uh, I I think that you see them trying different ways to make sure that their feature players get shots. That's similar to us. Uh, but their defensive, the denial, uh, every guy one through 10 that's going to play will step in and take a charge. Uh, it's a gritty bunch for sure that we're gonna play. Uh, and I don't know how well you know uh, Brian Dutcher, but I wonder if you could speak to the relationship that, that Juwan has with him. Do you get a sense from being around Juwan how special this is and how special the relationship is and how special this game is because of that. Uh, I, I only know Brian a, a little bit. I don't, I don't know him like a, a, a great, a great deal. Uh, I will always be appreciative of this two years ago uh, was our first summer out as a staff. And he pulled me aside and said, you know, uh, I know what you're doing. I know the sacrifices that you're making away from your family out of Philly for the first time. He said, but you're going to love it. He said, because the people are so very special and he couldn't be any more, more accurate. And Jawan and Jay Smith, the last couple of days when it comes up, whether it be a scouting report conversation or just even the logistics of when when San Diego State's coming and 
when are they shooting and all that kind of thing. Those two guys are, are, they're really excited. They're, they're, um, you know, and I, I'll, I'll use the term. They're, they're almost giddy about this opportunity. And, and now you factor in national TV and uh, playing a really good opponent. There, there's a lot of uh, excitement. There's certainly a lot of excitement for those guys personally. Um, and here's the deal. When the ball goes in the air, all that goes out the window. It's our five guys against their five guys. And we can hug and kiss and do all that stuff after the game. But, uh, you know, when you – everybody out there that's ever competed against a brother or a cousin, their next-door neighbor, you always wanted to win, whether it was wiffle ball or, or you know, hide-and-seek. You always wanted to be the last one. So that's the way this game feels. Thank you. Appreciate it, Phil. Right. Uh, next up is James Hawkins from the Detroit News. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate your time. Um, I have a few questions. Um, I guess this may sound dumb, but uh, I guess just how do you how do you acquire that desired pace that you guys want to play at? Uh, no, 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 no. Please, that, that's 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 uh, that keeps us up at night, getting this pace. I, I think that one is uh, first there has to be an insist an, an insistence, uh, which there is. And then there has to be a commitment from the five players on the floor. So the coaching staff has to insist on it every single time. The players on the floor have to commit to it. They have to commit to acknowledging when they can't make that pace and, and really take themselves out of the game. Then we get a fresher body in there. Uh, we have to become a, a better defensive rebounding team, which means that overall we have to become a better uh defensive team our numbers are pretty good but they are a little bit inflated and uh i think it's it's straight up it's a commitment it's a commitment to insist upon a sprint every single time down the floor for all five guys and if it and they then have the responsibility as long as they're held account accountable uh you, you know, they can't look sideways if you say well you didn't sprint that time and we get we we want to get somebody in there. It's fresh. And then I know with Hunter, with Hunter being a focal point of the offense, when when the outside shots aren't dropping and teams are you know kind of collapsing down on him in the paint, I guess what can you guys do to combat that and maybe still keep him involved and get him touches? Uh, <laughs> you know, you know what? Um, I'd love any and all suggestions on that because on a crowded floor, uh, on a crowded floor, it, it's challenging. One of the things that we are work, working with is maybe a little bit different entry point. So if you enter the ball from the wing and everybody's loaded up to that side of the ball, that's going to be a tough pass. But maybe if the ball is entered from the top of the key going down the floor, maybe you have less, uh, maybe you have less congestion. We're looking at it. We're working on it. We're putting in wrinkles uh, to address that. We want to make sure that um, that Hunter is part of that, you know, sprint the floor, get out, get down the floor. Maybe we beat the be, beat uh, the other big guy down the floor and get a position that we want. But right now, the it's just a crowded floor. Uh, but we are not walking away from. We know who our horse is. We know where our bread is buttered, and that is one of the things that makes us different than a lot of college teams yeah a lot of teams go to five out we're not going to five out we're going to stick with this we're going to have a low post presence and uh, we're, we're going to we're going to jump on hunter's back and and make sure that that he takes us you know where we want to go as a group and then and then my last question is i guess just what do you look for in the freshman you know guys like like kobe caleb musa uh frank i guess what do you, what do you look for to make sure that they're making steady progress Exactly that. We look for steady progress. And, and it, it only has to be one thing, James. Like it, it's not, it's not, uh, well, Caleb will be in great shape. Uh, he's going to make all of his shots and then everything's going to be great Saturday night. Now it's like, what's the progress? Uh, uh, Kobe is, is a quiet guy. Okay. Today in practice, can we get him to be vocal? 
it's it's just one little area. We have a thing around the program, 1%, 1%, 1%. And everybody from Jawan all the way down to our, any of our walk-ons to our managers, we are asked to give 1% better in one area today. That's exactly what we're looking for from those young guys. Frankie Collins, like go back, his foul shooting. But he and I had a chance to speak yesterday. He went two for two at Carolina. Okay. That's that was his one percent. It didn't go real well for us across the board with our team, but uh, he he was two for two. All right, let, now can we go four for four in your next opportunities? But it's always we're not going to. They're not going to overnight become fabulous. I always have gone back to this idea: five games into his freshman year that ended up as a second team All-American, Hunter Dickinson did not start. And he did not start by merit. Austin Davis won that job. So it wasn't like, you know, Hunter came in and, oh, well, that's it. He was the be all end all. He worked to get there by being 1% one, 1 better each and every day. Coach, you got uh, one final one for you from Andrew Cohn from uh, MLive. Uh, as as far as the four and three start, I mean, you know, Jawan and the players were talking about how it's it's early in the season, and and it is. But I guess if you can share a little from behind the scenes, like the balance between not panicking, but also you know letting letting the players know this this isn't the standard, you know, if that makes sense. Well, I would say, Andrew, like again, sometimes it seems like I'm gushing over Jawan, but I go back to our first year, and we couldn't get a sniff of a win on the road in the big 10. And, and I just know myself, I, I'm, I'm ripping it and, and agonizing over it. And he just had this ability to say, okay, everybody breathe. Let's get on to this day and this challenge. That's exactly the message that he has delivered uh, to these players. And it's why there is not a lot of, the, the, there's not a lot of hand wring. There's a lot of introspective study going on, uh, and, and it's not just a numeric study. But all right, let's look at film. Let's let's see where where we can improve. So I, I just have this this notion of it seems so. You can, you can get so despondent. And then you look at the calendar and say it's December, you know, but you cannot be cavalier about it. You can't say, ah, you know, it was the setting or it was this or it was that. We clearly have identified more from the three losses than the four wins. But even those were sketchy at times. These are the areas. And if we can get to those areas and be better today, then we'll play better tomorrow. That that's the whole thing. Play better. Play better. Play better individually and collectively tomorrow against a quality opponent. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate your time. We'll see hey, you tomorrow. Hey Tom. Tom. Yep. I have one. I have one question. Yes, sir. You started this by stating that a lot of people were on their way to Indianapolis. Is something going on in Indianapolis that I've missed? No. I I've mean, been so, I'm, I'm so focused in on hoops. I don't. Is something happening? It is it's a little bit of a football game, the pigskin classic or something. I'm I'm not sure what it is. I and think, I I think Harbaugh. I think Harbaugh's bringing some guys over there for some sort of meeting. Maybe St. Like Elmo. Seven on seven. <laughs> St. Elmo. Hey, I, I will say this, Tom. Uh, that atmosphere, like that atmosphere on Saturday, uh, that was chills for me. And I, and I measure all athletic experiences where I'm a fan on the 20, 2008 World Series Game 5 in Philadelphia. The Phillies were going to win the World Series. I knew it. And uh, that first half, I left at halftime. I had to take my wife to the airport. The, the, the fans brought it, boy. They really, really bought it. And I... I fully understand um, 
the friendly rivalry that is Ohio State Michigan now. So thank you for everybody out there providing me that uh, lifetime experience. So you finally have your full indoctrination into the Michigan Michigan man syndrome. <laughs> I, I I understand, and I will say that. I was somewhat taken aback by the number of Ohio State people that were walking in and around the crowd and the parking lots and everything like that and in their gear. And I was thinking, in Philadelphia, that might get antagonistic. It might get a little bit nuts. <laughs> Here, a lot of respect. So congratulations. We, we, wish, we wish everybody in the football program just tremendous success because championships are for a lifetime. They are a lifetime, and I hope that they can go get a championship tattoo, each and every one of them. Okay, Coach, we appreciate it. All right.